well, it doesn't matter if you've been hunting for a lifetime or just this is your first year, there's always something you can learn for hunting and staying warm in the deer stand. Because if you're warm, you're gonna be more successful and obviously more comfortable, but uh, it's gonna be a lot safer too. And I think it goes back to when I was younger, I, again, I didn't have anyone in my family that hunted. So I had to learn all this on my own. And I remember literally just about freezing my fingers off. I can remember one particular sit, it's probably 1986, we used to stand on a branch. We didn't have tree stands, we didn't have money. So we're climbing up a tree. You know, we literally shimmied up some trees because there was a big branch at 14 feet up that we wanted to stand on. And that's how we hunted. Um, I have a friend of mine, Paul, that's in the background here. He grew up as a Michigan hunter. And uh, Paul, how old are you? Um, 80, a little over 80. Yeah, he's a little over 80. And he's out here right now. He's going to be hunting public land in Minnesota by himself. Literally dragging deer a lot of times by himself. Hunting out of a blind on the ground or even a tree stand so very commendable he's been doing that for years he shot a nice 10 point out here last year but he's a friend and we're loved to have him here but you probably remember standing on a branch back in the day we didn't have tree stands or fancy stands I had one branch i mean actually facing the tree i'm standing on the branch and it's only five inches but there was a, a limb that grew crooked on it and because it would hit the calf of my leg i could balance myself <laughs> so I could turn around on the thing and, and stand on that one five-inch uh, round stick. Yeah, it was, I mean, it's, we grew up hunting where we didn't have all the fancy gear we have right now. And it's amazing we survived. And uh, believe it or not, Paul's racing boats in, you know, right now currently. And his boats go almost 100 miles an hour. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, Paul. So it's great to have him in, in camp, basically, at, home, at the house for a while. But at the same time, we all remember when we were freezing because we didn't have the nice clothes that we do now. And, and it's a luxury. But it wasn't just about the nice clothes. There were ways that I learned to stay warm back then with layering, different types of layering, and some of the principles to talk about now that we actually stayed warm without spending a lot of money. Now we spend a lot of money because when I buy gear, I want it to last a lifetime. And there's a difference there and it's worth the investment. So I'm going to go through here how you can stay warm in the deer stand. And these principles apply whether it's early season or late. You need to stay warm. And, and really, number one, I use a hand muff. And this is so important to me that I was using First Light gear. They didn't have a hand muff. So I bought a cheap one and then I used their Gore-Tex Gator and wrapped it around the hand muff so that I could actually have a windproof hand muff and stay warm. And I use these, it doesn't matter what time of the year it is because most of them, the quality ones, now First Light actually has one and it has a zipper. But what I like about hand muffs is that I can take a couple of these large hand warmers, these heat packs, and I can put them in here. And then I only use thin gloves. These are just thin little gloves fingerless actually so I can use my phone shoot my bow my gun uh, accurately but by the time you add these right here and the fact that your hands are only out of your hand muff for just minutes at a time to make a shot if that then your your hands can stay toasty warm all day long and I've been doing that for years and I tell this story often but going back into the mid 80s when I started hunting I wanted one of these because my fingers froze You're standing on that tree literally holding on to a a trunk and getting wet and damp it's 40 degrees i just remember them just numbing so i went to dunham's department store in waterford and they had one of these fancy hand muffs let's say it was 15 dollars. i couldn't afford it so my mom had some pieces of wool she sewed them together made a tube like that put a safety pin on it and that was my first hand muff i just pinned it to my clothes ever since then i've been bringing it out i put my grunt call in here i put my cell phone in here i put extra batteries for my camera SD cards for trail cameras that I want to go to. So it ends up a little bit of a fanny pack almost, but it's very essential to me. Have, obviously, I don't need it to stay warm in the early season, but like this morning, it was temps in the 40s, wind in our face for five hours as we sat, and it was kind of icy, it, it kind of cold. So I didn't even use the heat packs this morning. My hands still stayed warm inside the hand moth. So really critical, and that's why I put it first, because if your hands are cold, along with your toes and head you're going to be in big trouble and so toes that's next now i've gone through the layered pack boots i've used the mickey mouse boots the old white ones they were the warmest one they had triple layer rubber with felt in between they're made so that even if you went underwater and came back out you're still going to be 
warm with those boots and they still have insulation property to keep you warm. Now we use a 1600 gram boot like this one right here. And the 1600 gram, I like rubber boots because they leave very little scent. I tuck my pant legs inside the boot or keep them up here at least for the majority of hunting. Sometimes you get late, you wanna put it over because you have snow and rain that's coming down. You need that extra protection so moisture's not going into the boot. But I do that because then every step, scent's going up. That way, when I have my boot, if I have my pant like this, every time I step, that warm scent inside my body is going down and saturating the ground with every step. So I don't leave, like leaving that scent trail, so I leave my pants tucked on the inside. But bottom line is, even with 1600 grams of insulation, that's not enough to keep your feet warm. I'm diabetic, and so I have a little bit of neuropathy in my feet, a little bit of numbness, and I don't have great circulation. So the last two to three years, my feet get really cold. These have been a foot saver for me. These are Arctic Shield, not sponsored by them or anything. They're just a boot layering system and they're thin. What I found is I go up in my stand and you need to order these like two extra sizes more than they say. Like these are extra large. Um, I think they even say on here the size boot that they're for 12 to 13 size. And my boots are size 10 and these are barely big enough. So I need to get the double XL. I think that's the largest one they have to fit my size 10 boot, size 10, 11. So if you order something like this, make sure you oversize. And what I'm doing is I just put these, look how small these can get into your pack when you go out. I mean, you can just hang them with a string on the back of your, you don't need a lot to carry these out. But when you get out there, you can put these over your boot. And then I take one of these heat packs Imagine my boots inside. So the boots fit inside this and then I'm taking the heat pack and I'm putting that heat pack on top of the boot right here and then pushing it in there. I'm zipping it up tight. So I have that heat that's being trapped between the insulation layer and my boot. Keeps my feet toasty warm. And what a big difference. It's made it so that when I go out and it's 15 degrees in the morning, it's warming up to 28. My feet will stay warm the entire time. I don't even have to think about it. There's been times where I start at 25, it's gonna warm up to 40. And literally by nine o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning, my feet are freezing cold. I'm doing toe exercises to keep them warm. I've tried to face the sun so I can get sun on them. And they're not warming up till 11 or 12 o'clock. My feet have been so cold lately. I get down after an all day sit at one stand or another. And then they feel like clubs walking on the ground because they're so frozen. Something like this takes that right out of the equation and it keeps your feet warm and that can be so critical. So using a, a good boot, and again, you buy good boots, I expect these boots to last for six, eight, 10 years. They'll last for a long time. So if you buy junk, you get what you pay for. And I know people don't like me saying that, but that's true in most things in life. If you buy junk, you save a dime, you're gonna be buying it again in a short period of time and you're really not saving money over the long run and you're not as comfortable as you could be buying something quality. So toe is so critical. When it gets to your head, a lot of times I'm wearing a thinner face mask. Like this morning, I wore a thinner face mask like this and then I'm wearing a brim hat. What's nice about this face mask, I can pull the top of it right over the hat. And so, and then what I'm doing is I actually have a knit hat then I'm putting over that. So I have the knit hat, I have my face mask, and then I have my brim hat. And the brim hat's important, especially as a bow hunter, because a lot of times it seems like we're looking into the sun. If you're looking east, that sun's in your eyes, you're trying to make a shot. Very, very difficult to make that shot when you have the sun in your eyes. So I wear a brim hat almost all the time, and I wear like more of a heavy cotton duck hat that's more weather resistant when I'm out hunting but very critical and then when it gets into the late season this is a heavy weight and it's got fleece on the inside so by the time i wear a brim hat under this i have this and i'll still put that heavy fleece or heavy wool merino wool cap on top of this and i can stay toasty warm now, a lot of times my my clothing my coats like this is a quarter zip it'll and sorry i'm zipping it into the mic right there but and I'll zip it up right under my neck. So by the time I have the face mask coming down to here, I have this zipping up, I have my coat zipping up, I have the quarter zip underneath, then my neck is toasty warm. I don't need any kind of neck warmer. It just makes things too constrictive moving around as a hunter. 
And so whether it's this layer right here, I'll use an early season, this for heavy, sometimes both if it's really bad, and then a knit cap on the top. They even make like a Gore-Tex or rain resistant hat. I'll put that over it so I can keep my head dry, warm, and just think about layers. And if your neck's warm, if you just have this amount of space looking out, you're going to stay warm even in the most bitter temperatures, and that's critical. But between hand, toes, and heads, that's really a big portion of the battle. And then coming from there, I'm using layers. You know, this is a merino wool layer that I have on right now. This is a mid-weight, and then I have heavyweight, mid-weight, lightweight. A lot of times I wear a lightweight. I have actually a mid-weight under here. We were hunting this morning, so a mid-weight right here, a mid-weight outer, heavyweight, in some type of combination. And the whole idea is it's not just layering for warmth it's laying for, layering for perspiration so you're taking moisture away from your body i can wear all my heavy clothes I, I went up twice in wisconsin where i hunt i went up to the top twice and i took one break one time two breaks another time and made it to the top it was 37 minutes in and 36 minutes in up top every step it's about a 450 foot change in elevation you build up some sweat, but when you have good layers, it pulls that moisture away from your body and keeps you dry. If you're dry, you're gonna stay warm. You can actually feel that dampness going away about an hour in, and it's soaking it away from your body. Back in the day, I remember buying my first moisture wicking layer, and that was a long john. It was from Cabela's back in the early 90s. I think they called it Thermax, if any of you remember. My buddy Mike's coming out next week to hunt gun season here in Minnesota. I know he remembers because we were both like, he's four years older, so we were probably 17 and 21, 18 and 22 when we got these first layers or started getting that. You know, polypropylene, Thermax is what they called it in, in uh, Cabela's. But since that time, the merino wool is excellent. What's nice about wool is even when it's moist, it holds its, its heat, heating ability. So really great. And then the merino wool, you can actually wash where traditional wool, you can't. So very good properties for keeping you uh, warm and dry. I also wear uh, merino wool heavy socks too for layering. So getting that layering system, whether it's long johns, I actually am shooting this video with long johns. We're not going to show you those details, but I have long johns out right now because we were hunting. I have what I wore out in the woods right now. I just put my next layer on. So this first layer, socks, long johns, top, multiple tops, Quarter zips are great because they, you can really cover up. What's nice about the quarter zips when they're merino wool or some type of moisture wicking material, they're usually soft. So that soft fleece against your neck feels good and then you have your coat on top of that. So those layers are critical. Now we use bibs. And bibs are important because I, I hardly ever wear pants in the woods. I do in the early season sometimes, but bibs keep your, your core warm. And you can see like these with quality bibs, they go all the way up your back to the back of your neck and they go all the way up to the front. So this keeps your whole core warm and there's lots of different brands, lots of different styles, but just using a bib, using good layers, considering your head, hands and feet, that's a major portion of the battle right there. Now the problem is, is you, know, you have bibs, you have good jackets, a lot of them aren't bow friendly and we'll talk about that. So you want a tapered warmth, not just a bulk warmth, there's a big difference. Something I started using last year, and I was fortunate to use these. Um, I had someone that wanted me to try these out, but this is a Volt vest, and they're heated vests. I have a thin one, we have jackets, we have quarter zips, we have a shirt, long sleeve shirt, but these are incredible because they have batteries. My one will last five hours on high, and literally you'll turn it off within the first half hour, it gets so hot. So it takes you from using heavier layers, bibs and jacket, down to a mid-weight layer, even though it's 15 degrees. And you turn that on, let's say you feel some, uh, a little bit of uh, chill coming into your arms, your legs, you turn that on for a half hour, you're gonna be so hot, you turn it off. And then you turn it back on in another hour when you get chilled, it's incredible. If you haven't tried it, it's, it's a game changer. And I know everyone says game changer, I actually hate that phrase, I don't know why I just said that, but it is just because it really can keep you warm in that layer with that electric. It's just incredible. The batteries last a long time. There's a lot of quality brands out there. This is, I've been thoroughly impressed with this. It's a Volt brand, but um, pretty cool to have that. I know it's a luxury, but you don't have to have that. Again, you get down here, quality clothes, a tapered clothing, a tapered warmth. What I mean by that is they're specifically made for bow hunting. We use our First Light Solitude 
Um, that's a more of a mid-weight layer, but it's good down to about 25 degrees, 20 degrees, especially with proper layering. And then I use a sanctuary for everything else colder than that. So I find I use the solitude um, layer most during the entire season. Catalyst is for early season. It's not something you want to use when it's going to be a high of 42 or 45. And there's a little bit of wind. You're not going to make it even with good layering. You have to have that solitude layer. But when it gets really cold, we're using a sanctuary uh, system. So between that, proper layering, worrying about your head, your hands, your feet, using some of these little tricks, like these right here, your hand muff, using heat packs, then you can use light gloves, using heavy face mask, using a cap on top of that. You can stay warm in the deer stand. And it's an incredible feeling to be there when it's 15 degrees, it's November 7th, the wind's in your face, it's 11 o'clock and a monster come by, comes by and you can actually pull your bow back competently, appropriately, because you're warm, your joints, your core, your head, your toes, your face, your hands are all warm. You can make a great shot. You're comfortable. Keeps you in the stand longer. Keeps you enjoying the outdoors more. And those are some little tricks for keeping warm. And what I like about YouTube and making these videos, we get a lot of good comments about how you're staying warm in the deer stand because there's a lot of tricks. I can add one more. These heat packs are incredible. You bring a couple extra of those along with you. I encourage you. These are, again, I'm not sponsored by this. This is heat factory brand and what i found is these are by far the best i don't buy any of the other ones i bought them all i've used them for many years i've even gone back to where we used to put fuel into a little silver tin can that you lit and put it in a red velvet bag you put it in your clothing to stay warm that's how far you could smell the fumes i, I just know what that smells like to this day and that actually kept you warm these are awesome right here. I try to buy them on sale. I buy them in bulk. I think we have about six or seven other packages over there, those 10 at a time. Take a couple of those, put one on your core right here, drop one in behind your back, use it over a layer of material so it's not burning your skin. Yes, they can burn your skin. Put it out on the outside of a layer, just a single layer. Put it in your core here, core of your back, and that's almost like this heated vest, and it'll keep you warm. Once your core is warm and you practice these, leave some tips for staying warm in the deer stand. Again, I mentioned there's a lot of hunters on here that have only hunted one or two years. I love it when I get the comments of hunting 46 years. And uh, I think Paul's at an age that he hardly even watches YouTube. Do you ever watch YouTube, Paul? So he's outside of that age where, do you have a smartphone, Paul? No, he's shaking his head no. So that's okay, we love Paul, but I'm just saying, um, he's at an age, how many years have you hunted whitetails? When, what age did you start? Oh, did you start as a teenager? Probably when my boys started growing up. That's yeah. So you've probably been bow hunting around 60 years or 65 uh, years? Probably. Yeah. Not really great, but. Yeah. Good animal. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. It's just about hunting. I mean, you. We used to say. Wasn't that a big spike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember those days. And uh, now and then we make a mistake and shoot a small deer, but we like to get the big ones. Yeah. Like everybody else does. Yeah, that's, yeah. it's fun. And you're still having fun at 80. And literally, folks, Paul comes out here and, you know, he stays with us each year, but he goes out and hunts on his own. And he finds his own spots. He finds his way around here typically with a paper map still, which, why, which is why he sometimes goes from Rushford to La Crescent to Winona back to Ridgeway. That's like an extra hour, by the way. But you make it. Well, no, because I don't have my last day to hunt. I'm not even going to lift my bow up if that thing don't look like a real deer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way that would go. Well, I just, we appreciate you out here. And it's kind of an example that you know you're never you're never too uh, old to keep learning i'm 51 years old i've hunted about 35 years and um you know again it doesn't matter if you've been a hunter for a long time if you're new leave your tips for staying warm because this is critical for people a lot of people don't enjoy going out when it's cold because they just simply can't stay warm and there's no excuse for this you know again we use the first light clothing um but when you're buying quality clothes people say well i don't want to pay the price Again, it goes back to you buy junk, it's not as comfortable, it doesn't keep you as warm, and you're buying new stuff. 
in one fourth the time, one third the time. So a lot of times over the long run, you're spending more on clothing and you're not as comfortable than just buying decent clothes to begin with and going out and enjoying the hunt. And I hope you can stay warm this deer season, all deer season long and enjoy it all the way to the bitter cold end this season. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.